most of our mental problems and mental strength are connected to our childhood. We generally start paying attention to our kids when they start behaving inappropriately. But caregiving and attention should be started much before that. So today we are going to discuss certain developmental tasks and needs that are required to be met in the infant stage. We are majorly going to discuss about four theories, Maslow, Erickson, Bowlby and Piaget. Talking about Maslow's theory, a child doesn't need self-actualization. The only basic needs that the child has is biological and safety needs. So when the child is hungry, you feed them. When it is in pain, you comfort them. When they want to sleep, you just make them sleep, you protect them. That is all they need. But this is all common sense. Then what special am I talking about? There are two major important points that we need to keep in mind. One is contact and the other is consistency. So lack of contact creates an uncomfortable feeling in the child. Now this in later stages can be very challenging for the child because now they do not know that contact is good and contact can help you calm yourself or soothe yourself down when you have problem. So connections with uh, people having different relationships can be troublesome for them in future. If the child is crying and you come to soothe them down and when you leave them they start crying again and you come back again. Every time when the child needs you and the child cries you come back to the child. This creates a pattern in the child's mind that okay my caregiver will be present whenever I need them to be and whenever I, I have a requirement. But if you do not do so it creates a fear of abandonment in the child. Because even if you leave the child uh, alone for an hour and the child is crying, for a six months baby, that one hour is a major part of their life. And leaving that child for one hour crying will have long term effects on their memory. Maybe for once you'll be able to soothe them down, but the effect would stay and would come up to the surface later when they'll be having other relationships or when they'll start leading their okay, lives. So now let's move to Erickson's theory. If the child is crying and you try to force him a bottle, he knocks the bottle down and you're still trying to feed that baby. So you should back out a bit, I guess, because the baby's not hungry right now. It is something else that they need. Yes, children do have sucking as a self-soothing mechanism. So though even Giving that bottle may help and the child would stop crying but that will not help them in long run because right now we need to make them believe that if they need someone people are going to understand their needs and they are going to fulfill them. This is the time when they start developing the ability to be alone but they also need that assurance that if they have a requirement their caregiver would come to them and help them out. If there is failure in this stage, they develop mistrust towards their own feelings because they do trust the caregiver but there was one time when the caregiver didn't show up for hours and the baby was crying so they have a confusion over there. Should they trust the caregiver or should, should they not trust their caregiver? Again, similarly, they would not develop self-reliance because when they didn't need that bottle, when they were not hungry and you still gave them that bottle, they sucked on it and it was a self-soothing mechanism. But the original need was not fulfilled. So in such case, what would happen is they would start feeling, okay, so I'm feeling this way, but my caregiver thought that giving me food would help me. So maybe food is what I need. So the original need, your takes a back seat. Okay, so now let's come to Piaget. Children do not have much of cognitive references. So the references that they take is from their parents' feedback. If there is a loud thunderstorm and you are scared, then the child would be like, okay, this is scary. And I should be aware of this and be aware of this rather. But 
in case there's a thunderstorm and you just open the door and enjoy the thunderstorm they would be like okay this is not something that you should be scared of and fine it was a loud noise but everything will be fine because my parents are still not alarmed children do not know words they don't understand language but they definitely pick up on vibes so if the parents are freaking out on one thing or the other all the time the child would perceive this world as pretty scary because see mom is always scared mom is always freaking out so yes the schema formed over here is world is scary it may feel strange that uh, we are talking about mental schemas in infant stage but yes children do form schemas from that little age if you take them to any unpleasant situation in which they have been before they would start behaving reacting in a certain way like for example uh, when a child is taken to a clinic and they have had a previous experience of vaccination they would start crying then and there just because they know okay last time when i was here my experience was not pleasant and i got hurt somewhere okay so finally we come to bolby and bolby's attachment theory is really important at this stage because most of our adulthood problems comes from two things one is not being able to self soothe and the other is not being able to form attachment in various relationships so if the child is quite securely attached to the caregiver in such cases they'll be easy to suit down whenever emotionally distressed and they'll be available emotionally for other people but in case they have never been securely attached in such cases they will have fear of abandonment they would have a clingy nature but uh, they would try and reject the attachment figure whenever they are emotionally distressed so thus whenever they have any emotional distress they are not that easy to soothe or they are not they cannot self soothe of course and they have no other help because the primary caregiver could not make that attachment build and now they don't have that kind of schemas formed in them to form attachments with other people so if the parents are attentive to them the schemas formed will be much different than if the parents are not emotionally available for one reason or the other okay so set parenting tips now be attentive to the baby's cries before they become hysterical then accept the baby's needs as they are and validate their environment be consistent that is the most important thing for children if you break this consistency the trust issues will rise later on calm yourself down because if you are stressed as i told you kids pick up on vibes so if you are stressed yes your child will be stressed too if you are relaxed the child would stay in an unalarmed position they would relax too they you then you have to set up a routine for the child the circadian rhythm should be maintained about feeding sleeping etc and try and view the world from the baby's eyes see imagine yourself being so small and such large people or such large things around you and lo- lots of lots of uh, loud noises that's really scary for the baby infants have very little frame of references and no object permanence so every experience that they have is filed as initial mental schemas in case you find that your child is behaving inappropriately then remember that in the mind of the child negative attention is better than no attention so if your child is actually behaving quite inappropriately then look back and see are you paying enough attention to the child are you giving enough time to the child are you above what's going on in your personal life and thinking about what's going on with the child are you seeing the world through that child's eyes if you think this video was of help then please like and subscribe and next week i would be uploading a video on child development 
for toddlers. Thank you.